So, hello, YouTube. We're back. <laughs> Let's, uh, I guess go through the RVR. So, we're going to be doing, for this week, the Scarlet Realm quest. We have Lost Charge Vulcan and New Mob Operation 1. Scarlet Realm has a pretty high count for Boomas, Go Boomas, and Giga Boomas. Wolves are also a decent count. So for people looking for rares, it might not be too bad. Like, for example, they have, sometimes have things like Disco Brava, or Brave Man, excuse me. Um, honestly, I'm wondering if I should just bring in Red ID for this. Thank you for sticking around, Murphy, uh, from earlier. Hopefully you have a okay time at uh, work later. So yeah, so from that perspective, we're probably going to be sticking to IDs that potentially... I'm not sure I care about the Hildebear rares. There's only 13 in here. I'm more interested in some of the off rares here. So for example, Yellow ID gets a Jito and Red Handgun from Booma, from Giga Booma and Booma respectively. So I might actually bring in a um, Raw cast for this. This is not the kind of hunt you would do Hildebear stuff on anyway. And Yellow Ice DD still gets Frozen Shooter. So honestly, I think that's kind of the right call. I think I'm actually going to bring it a Hugh Cat or a Rock Cast. I might as well just play to the strengths of the run kind of thing. So if you have a character that potentially gets something nice from the Talos, Barbels, and Bartles, it's more that kind of quest for it versus like a Hilder Bear specific. If they happen to also go Frozen Shooter, it's nice. But with that kind of strong focus, I'm not really interested in hand Handgun Mila, but getting Red Handgun, Red Saber, and a Jito from these enemies is kind of good. Also, did it just random select something? It's unfortunate. Oh, you thought it increased rare rate? I don't think it does. I don't know who selected here. Did it select my Humar? <laughs> no, I'm not playing Yellow ID Humar. Oh, I can't even I can't even equip bar properly. That sucks. Quick game. Fumble of controls. Yeah, the downside is if I click off of the game, sometimes it thinks I'm clicking in the game for some reason. And it uh, selected my first character, despite me not having the controller in my hands. A bit unfortunate. So yeah, I think it's probably better to do runs. Like, White ID I think is fine, but I think Yellow ID is actually stronger here, if we're talking about purely those three enemies. Like, the only other people that have decent things would maybe be Red ID with Disco Brave Man and Red Saber. Lava's Can and Purple wouldn't be too bad. Um... I just don't think the others are really worth it. Maybe Viridian with Heart of Daisy Chain if you wanted that item in a Jito. I guess that's not too bad also. But those are the things I would probably focus on since they have a very high number of those compared to everything else. So we'll start off with this. And again, it's a little different because most people when you think forest, you're farming Hilda Bears. This is not really a quest you should do that on. I don't know about the actual- I don't know how much of that's true for Blue Burst, to be honest with you. GameCube, Xbox, and everything else behave a little differently than Blue Burst. I, I would like to see it written somewhere that they behave that way for Blue Burst. Because I know there's the plus one attribute, minus one attribute with like Red ID and Pink ID. Vinia Wiki has it. Can you put the- I'm gonna- I'm gonna use permit on you, one second. Could you give me the exact link? Once I permit you. I'm gonna double check. Is it open to join? Uh, sure, if you wanna pop in, Toriel. Although I'm gonna warn you, tower's awful. It's really awful. <laughs> but you're welcome to join us there. Oh, the music fell asleep. Music, please. The tower first then? No, I'm doing them in order. You'll see what it's like, it's awful. I might I might spare a Toriel and ask him not to come into the tower one. It's really bad. Episode one only. Let me take a look at this link that was just sent.
Oh, oh, okay, I see what you mean now. Interesting. Okay, so let's do the basic quest. So it was... Scarlet Realm 1. Should be an extermination quest. Yeah, I I think I think for tower I will just manage to where you need Hellcleave. I just I don't think there's a way. It would be like a parameter Dago Hellcleave. This quest is horrendous. So there's a warp to go back to the other place faster if I want to. I vaguely recall this quest. Uh whatever you're comfortable with in tower. I'll, I'll probably end up bringing a white ID character. It's probably going to be my force, honestly. Since uh, tower benefits very heavily from D502. Alternatively, uh, I think purple ID into tower is pretty good. And I think because of the second quest's really high ill gill, Del Lily count, I think I would prefer white a little more than purple. But purple's still very valid. Yeah, the problem with tutorial is that if you really if you literally do not have end game equipment, you can't even do anything in the episode. It will just be very miserable. I will spare you that experience. You could join in on the the second RB, the RBR after that though, because it is really bad. Like if you're if you're not doing like several thousand damage currently to the enemies in forest, you're gonna be doing like probably literally ten damage to like five k health enemies. It's just unfortunate. This is how episode 2 is built. Just do that one next. No problem. Yeah, we'll do it next. We're just doing them in the order of the RBR. And then after that, we'll pick which RBR we like, which I have a feeling will be episode 4. Since I think episode 4 is not too bad, as long as we do the telepipe tricks. It's also pretty good XP for leveling people. If you have any comments on that, that particular quest, because I think Hellcleave has run that a few times. I've also run it privately a few times. I think we were talking before on a different stream that uh, you could do it for green and red for the Heaven Striker chances. I was playing, I think, my Hugh Casile into it, for example. Technically, if you want things like Yashminikov, it might also be okay. It's all just uh, underground. There's not really any Gurdabulus in that final quest, so there's no point to doing Gurdabulu rares specifically. There's not a lot of Goron detonators either, so it's a very Goron and Pyro Goron focused run. So if you want to do White ID, for example, for Slicers, it's not bad. Yeah, so if Team wants, we could technically try it with Purple ID. I could bring in maybe a Purple ID Force, that way chat doesn't have to worry about anything, and they could bring in whoever they want for leveling. Otherwise, uh, as I said before, I think the quest is pretty good with Hunters. Oh, you're purple? That's true. A blue lip make, technically. Otherwise, I think it is pretty easy to run as a hunter. There's not really a lot of zoos to worry about. Like, some quests are, like, infested with them, but that one's pretty easy, comparatively. And due to the... Due to the fact that there's less enemies overall, it's not too bad. You want objective war forces anyway. That's fair. Yeah, I actually think hunters clear really quick in that quest, just because again, there's not really there's there's a, a lot of not easily gefoliable waves. So I don't think force has like the fastest clear in it either. So like the the other benefit of some of the other episode four quests is there's a lot of enemies that are back to back, able to get dropped by gefoli stacking, but that's not really a thing in that quest. So yeah, I, I would bring in whoever you're comfortable with, honestly. Most waves are five or less, so playing four player, Hunter is not really seen as a downside if everybody focuses. So there's a switch in here, interesting. Assuming we clear this and it'll open it up. Yeah, more often than not, we don't usually end up running a lot of the episode one quests because they're mostly just okay. Like, right now, like, we're getting, like, barely 70 XP a second. The waves are okay-ish. 
it's hard for Forest to really compete with XP, but even with this XP boost, this is pretty low due to how much walking is happening so far. Although this room having multiple spawns is kind of nice. So I'm imagining the tricks to it would be like how we cleared that. If someone was already in this room, we could hit the switch faster. There's definitely like ways to optimize it. I actually hope for if they do more quests, that they bring back the idea of stepping on the switch to summon it. Anguish 4. That is an interesting statement. I do think for the most part, if you're like really overgeared, I I'm gonna push this potentially unpopular opinion. I feel like we, for the most part, we're not playing with new players. We should probably just be doing forest on like Anguish 1 or 2. Most of the time we combo kill regardless, especially if we're playing like raw cast, you cast army. The only thing it really impacts is freeze traps, so it just depends on like... Like right now we don't even need them, they're just dying so quickly. Like I'm killing them in like a normal heavy kind of scenarios with buffs. The only thing that would happen is that a force would have to Zalore once. It would probably still combo kill for more stats. I don't think like Anguish is right for all things, but I think Forest is one of the few examples where you don't really have a time loss. Yeah. So we're going to open the laser gate that will lead to the next floor. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't even know how much time we could really save there. Yeah. We're just looking for points where we backtrack. I like the flaming forest. I think I said before, I think some of the newer quests, I like them playing around with like the tile sets. And I like the creativity there. I'm just not in love with like the enemy spawns, if that makes sense. I like very enemy dense or like rapid warp quests. Although, that one quest we did on the last RBR with Episode 2 was fantastic. That quest was really fun. It was definitely thought out from the point of, like, if you have max level shifted timers, or even just, like, raw moral timers on uh, level 20, it, it feels really, really fun to play. Yeah, the Phantasmal Surge, I think it was called. It's very good. Like, see how we have, like, a, a room with a lone Hildel? Like, why don't they just spawn four enemies here? Like, couldn't they just do Hildel and, like, three Hallows? Like, they don't have to put five enemies every wave, but, like... Why... why single spawn some of these? I like the quests in Forest that use a lot of the moths. I don't want to try the pen other penumbral searches. Yeah, we could potentially do that on stream at some point. I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those things where, like, I guess I guess we'll lead into a discussion of quest design. I really like there's one episode four quest I don't remember the name of. Oh, there's all these little boxes over there that I can't hit. That's so sad. That has a switch where it spawns enemies rapidly. Maybe chat remembers the name of the quest offhand. We've done it on stream a couple times. It's not like our most played quest ever, but I like the concept of being able to time waves at your pace. I like being able to potentially split. I like the whole idea of Penumbral Surge, where you could play one path all the way through, or if you're playing four player, the quest very dramatically changes. I don't like doing a lot of backtracking, Unless there's like really quick warps in between. Like I don't mind us revisiting rooms like a central hub kind of idea. But I don't like it when quests make us do like a 3-4 room trek back to it. And then like making us burn it. Yeah. I think there's very interesting like visual stacking in some of the new ones. Ooh, Luminous Field. Interesting. Rip Dango. He died for our sins. Our sin was not enemy clearing fast enough. But yeah, it's just one of those things where... You know, I, I prefer really enemy dense rooms. Like, I'm a big fan of, like... Most of Terrell's ego, as well as, like, Rescue from Regal. I like that there's potentially multiple... Multiple enemy. I like that kind of like laser gate ticks. Like there's little nuances in the quest that are like I like that little extra touch. 
<laughs> Kalvisha asking what the salty comment was. Um, we did that at the beginning of the video. I'll not go into details here. I don't want to repeat it in the main videos. Beyond the Horizons, my kind of quest. Like, I like rooms where, like, if you're going to move a lot, I hope that there's, like, a lot of waves in one room. So that way it kind of, like, favors some of the forces for stacking. Like, I like being able to set up in a room and not... And if you can't set up, I at least want a lot of enemies to fight. So kind of like I enjoy Endless, even though I can't set up in the room, just because there's a lot of waves back to back. And it changes rooms all the time. But it's so fast with the warps and everything else. And it lets you know like when a boss is coming and stuff like that. I really like quests like that. I like potentially doing little gimmicks to speed things up. Like certain enemies could be killed to skip a room if it's not that fun. Like I do like that actually from like uh, TTF for example. So it's like, I wish I saw them play more with those kind of mechanics where there's like a quote-unquote speed run, speed run route or there's like a full enemy clear route and things like that. And I think when they bother to do those, those quests end up being really fun. I think, for example, a lot of the anniversary quests are like mostly fine. Like they're very high enemy density and that and to me that's all I really want most of the time. But there's ways you can play around with like using the rooms and doing more there. If I had to summarize a Calvisham for you in a sentence, it would be... I think the person doesn't understand what Aphinia is. <laughs> just... just based off the comments. Yeah, like, the anniversary quests are pretty much, like, the best possible quests to do farming. Is there any point to something? There's, like, a red gate over here. Interesting. I'm assuming we have to come this way eventually. Did we miss something? Oh, there's a gap in the wall. My bad, I, I thought that was solid for some reason. Oh, they got an Ejido. Nice, nice. Get rid of these. So it's just kind of like one of those things. I, I think a good telltale sign of like a good episode one quest if these moth fists are loading in, I feel like the quests that don't try to mitigate their long spawn by allowing you to fight something as you wait, or making them pre-spawn, I think are just kind of worse quests. Like, they're, like really good quests will make sure that they pre-spawn. Like, they'll be coming in during other waves, and you could do other things while you're waiting for it. A little warp here. And, like, that's the kind of stuff I want to see. Where it's like, it's not even... It's not even necessarily like super creative enemy spawn patterns. Some of them are interesting. Like if you separate the big bad, uh, you might, you know, encourage use of freeze traps and things like that in certain rooms over others. So, continue forward. Like not every room has to have like a ton of ton of enemies, but I feel like there has to be like what I'll consider the payoff. Like, if we come here and only fight, like, three waves, like, I'm going to be disappointed. Like, we're in a big arena. I want it to be like, oh, you know, you, you've gone through some of the slower parts of the quest. Here's the payoff for actually bothering to get to this point. So I'm hoping we get, like, yeah, there we go. Now we're getting, like, a steady stream. This is good. This allows the force to set up Gafoe. This is what I'm talking about. These kinds of rooms I like. Not every room has to be like this, but when they exist... It feels a little more balanced for forces. And I feel like to make it more fun for forces, at least for forests, there has to be a large number of enemies. Whereas for other quests, it's more balancing around like a mix of, you know, how many non gafoeable targets are there? Do they have Gafoe targets back to back for ultimate? I like the payoff there was okay. You know, it, I, I'm glad there, there were that many waves for sure. Just trying to shoot the Rappies. Just want to see if they drop any eggs. Okay, nothing of- well, I guess I could pick up the HP material. Oh, by the way, Toriel, if you walk away from the Rappies, they'll get up faster. So people will go a certain distance from them just to force them to stand up and then shoot them with a gun. Or you'll send people Gafoe with the force and then it'll hit them when they walk away. 
a little speed tip. Oh, I forgot. I could have taken the warp there. Yeah, so here's another mechanic that I appreciate. And this is in a couple quests. I always forget it's here, though. If you take the warp here, you can just instantly go back and forth. So, like, I kind of like this for Endless in particular, where you could potentially just instantly get dropped in front of the shop. Like, quests that play with, like, the normal pattern here, I think it's pretty fun. So if you're just looking to hand in the quest, you could, for example, clear the quest, warp here, do stuff in your bank, and then do that. Because a lot of these quests just kind of waste your time, <laughs> if you're real with you. So I appreciate when it's in there. Need exercise? Maybe. Okay. And we're done. So let's go ahead and get Hellcleave on the next one. I'm going to bring in a force. I'm going to bring in... I think Static Thick was the character name. It's Hell Hellcleave Hungry. So yeah, Toriel, I would recommend you watch and then you'll understand. And then you're more than welcome to join in the one after that. But I, I do not want to have new players experience it. I'm sorry. It just... Between, like, the helplessness of it, I've been there, I'm not interested in making other people sit through that. I think I commented last time, unless people have, like, demon mech guns and fr frozen shooters and stuff like that, it's just an absolutely miserable experience. So keep in mind that almost every enemy could do upwards of 900 damage on charges. Y'all got the players for tower. Uh, I think Dango, Help Cleave. Um... I always forget how to say the name Expio. I think are willing to do it. If Expio wants to sit out, then you're more than welcome for the just the tower run to top in. It is it is certainly an experience. Right. Just made sure I was in episode two. <laughs> like like it's to the point where you have to ask you can't one does not casually do tower i put it that way like episode one episode four i'm willing to carry the team you guys can bring it whatever you want it could be as optimal or unoptimal as you want it to be tower is like i do not mess around with this this is where like happiness goes to die chat <laughs> it is such a miserable experience i guess i'll bring in god technique i guess uh I need to go to my share bank. I'm going to go ahead and as a force. Note, I'm playing a force. I switched to a melee mag, by the way. Just want you to know that I did that because that's how much I believe this place is miserable. I'm going to take double adept and then I'm going to bring in bringer's rifle. And I don't plan on using text for the rest of the run. So I'm at max accuracy. That's all that matters. The rest of the, the mag stats, I mean, it'd be nice if I leveled the Sato up more with Dimates. I guess I could technically mag feed while I'm doing it. My power does not mostly matter at all. I just have to land demons. Okay, I have stuff to feed the mag. That's good. You know what? I'll bring in Monomates too, just to feed the mag if I get the chance. So we're to make sure we bring in several scape dolls. So we're going to sort. I got three scape dolls. That's not too bad. That should probably be fun. And then we got to do Lost Charge Vulcan. So yeah, I just want people to be aware. This is like quite a thing. Okay, if everybody gets a little closer, we'll be ready to go. So yeah, I just, I just want to under, I just want, I cannot understate how unfun these kinds of quests usually are. For newer players. If you have very experienced players, it's not too bad. I miss assuming it's a retrieval quest. Yeah, so keep in mind everything can insta-kill us. It's recommended as a party you have at least one ranger, preferably two. Um, at least one person should be a cast. And force can technically be skipped. It's somewhat preferable, I think, to have a raw moral instead, but this is just the idea I have. I don't think you get a lot out of a force, sadly, here. So I'm just going to be, like, really just playing support here. Where's Dango that I can't buff? Oh, just further forward. So, like, these one-off spawns are fine. But you can see, like, the team's doing, like, 20s. Okay, there we go. I landed demons. 
Though, like, these spawn totals are not too terrible. Some some quests flood you with these. When they're just one ofs, they're easy. So I'm not sure how hard this quest will be for Tower. Ooh, that could have been really bad. So Ilgil can insta-kill us, as a reminder. Gaigwees are fine. They're probably the most tame enemy here. Oh, I guess Gaigwees also don't have insta-kill. They almost killed me, though. Look at that, chat. <laughs> I, got, I got put at uh, 7 HP. So that's not- so far it's not too bad. Like, when you're only dealing with one, it's honestly not too bad. It just- when you suddenly fight, like, four Ilgils, Epsilon, Gaigui, the wave is miserable. So right now, we can control it, so it's just one of. So, so far, this is very tame for Tower. Very, very tame for Tower so far. Uh, we need to make sure to stun those, or else they also shoot insta-kill. If you get close to them, they could drain your HP to 1, which is useful for uh, triggering Mag Blast. So there's like, I actually like that as a mechanic in Tower. That's like one of the few things that I like in Tower. But you can see like, we're just basically trying to shut them down with Zalor or Demon them. So if people don't have endgame gear, you just get bodied. I think it Gibbles punches me at any point I die. We're gonna use Razan here also. Oh, that's the insta-kill. So there we go. <laughs> First insta-kill of the match. It happens. It just, it shows what happens if you don't instantly jump them. They just kill the players. Yeah, it's not necessarily our fault. We're learning the quest. I'll try to freeze them with Rebarda when I can, so that way they don't get to have free reign. But yeah, it's... So, so far, as I said before, this is pretty tame for Tower, but we're still pretty early in the quest, so we'll see what happens. Like, we're not getting hit by more than two at a time. Which is fine. If the whole quest is like this, I wouldn't mind doing it again. And then we don't necessarily need Super Endgame. But again, if it does like quadruple epsilon, four ill guild, murder flower, then it's miserable. Demon, please. I might have to put on a smart link. I think I'm missing way more than I should. Okay, so this is one of the tame ones. That's good to know then. So there, you see how I just did like 2000 damage? I'm just here to basically three quarter. Oh, that would have killed me if that hit me. I'm glad that did not hit me. So I'm here to just maybe occasionally just ultra dump their HP bar. <laughs> That's basically it. I could technically wear a slightly different mag in order to get more ATP. Speaking of which... Don't mind me, just feeding my mag for more power mid-match. So yeah, I have a 75% chance of it reducing their HP, so my third hit might sometimes do it. And if not, I'll Zalore so the team can actually do damage. Yes, <laughs> rip team. So yeah, if you're not like instantly on them, they will just kill players randomly. Oh, hello, 1 HP. I would like to not be at 1 HP. Although I think it triggered my mag, fortunately, which is good for me. I think those enemies are fine. I like them mixed with other things. Okay, I froze the Del Lily. That's actually huge. That was a lucky freeze. I'm not guaranteed to get that freeze. I'm going to try to stunlock him with Rebarda. Got him. So again, Frozen Shooter guarantees it. Force is just RNG, which is why I think Ramoral is like a little better at this. Because it's not RNG whether... There we go, big health loss. Whether or not I freeze the target. And again, oh, there's a healing circle back here. That's actually good to know for our other players. That's actually super huge. So, so far, this is a very generous tower. It even has a healing circle. Most people have to do what they call... Uh... Actually, I forget what the abbreviation is. I don't usually do it in public games. But you, you die on purpose with Escape Doll you res yourself with it, so that way you get your traps back. That's a very common thing to have to do if you don't have enough casts in Episode 2, but it looks like they thought about that at least. That's not too bad. This is a custom quest from what I recall, so I think the custom quests will generally not be as atrocious as the mainline quests. There are some that are just completely miserable to play. You'll see a lot of what I call the cross-formation lilies. So you'll be in a big room where lilies are in cardinal directions away from you. 
And what that means is that if you cannot lock down at least two of them, you die. There's you die. There's nothing to do other than die. Oh, full time drop from box. We'll take that. So yeah, there's like certain things you can do in order to mitigate it, but it's like really, really difficult. So so far, really tame. Most of the enemies are right next to each other. So you know, my opinion of the quest is going up because it's actually completable. <laughs> But usually at the end of the tower, there's what we call the gauntlet or the arena. And uh, that's where usually the bad spawns are, where it's kind of a knowledge check. So we'll, we'll see how bad the arena gets. The climb here is pretty nice. Reasoning is really good. Oh, definitely. The arena is not too bad. Okay, chat's reassuring me. I wasn't sure because I don't normally play a lot of episode 2. I've been scarred pretty badly by some of those other ones. With the, uh, <laughs> what's like quadruple Gaiagweave, like quintuple uh, Ilgils. It's like, what is going on? Ooh, interesting chainsaws. One a couple of weeks ago was way where Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. There's some where I'm just like, nah. Yeah, there's some where I'm like, mm mm. We pop those boxes, by the way, because uh, this is tower, so potentially the drops here are fantastic with common weapons. So we could end up with like a lot of 50 hit plus items. There we go, I actually demon killed that enemy by myself. I feel proud. The force actually killing something with ATP. I'm not getting through that. So interesting layouts so far. I'm using something called Add Up to reduce my TP costs, and it also increases accuracy by 20, and it also gives me 12 resistances, which means I literally barely survive Epsilon. Oh, speaking of which, I just leveled up. That's actually huge. Accuracy and damage. Love to see it. So, so far, like that, still, it's probably the hardest room so far. Double, double Ilgil and that many Gibbles. Oh boy. I'm getting cross-checked. I want to get out of this figure skating competition. Thank you. I do, I do not want to skate with you. I want to disqualify you real quick. Oh, hello, Epsilon. This quest has different layouts. N this area has many different layouts, specifically. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that do tower, but there's different versions of tower. So some of them will the traps might be different. The enemies will be very different. So far, this is not too bad. If you don't have demons for this enemy, its defense is 999, and Ilgil's defense, I think, is 1,000 plus. So if you have trouble killing pan arms, think about pan arms from episode one, how tanky that is. It is tankier than the pan arms, from what I remember. So imagine trying to just kill that with raw damage. It's, it's really not going to happen. Yeah, they have 1360 defense, which is insane. Like, just think about how... If you want to, put, want to put that into context, each of these ill gills is like fighting a pan arms that can insta kill you and attacks quickly and skates all over your dead body and cares not for your feelings. So if you let them if you let them be free, bad things will happen to you very quickly. Wait. Oh, is there a switch or something in there? Oh. Interesting. So this one also has the concept of bless, which I think is a good sign. So some of the harder quests, um, allow you to activate a console which gives you immunity so like really really disciplined runs can try to time the immunity from bless in order to just be immune to really awful waves and unfortunately if you don't have that timing on some of those quests you will die because there's just so much insta kill you'll know if we have the blessing active by the fact that everybody will be glowing so right now it's not active i did see that it used the word bless so that's why i figured i'd mention it and these Epsilons have 1780 defense. They are the tankiest enemy in the game. You can see we're literally doing zero damage. <laughs> it's so dumb. So if there's not anybody to Zalore those, it, you do like literally 20 damage, like a 5k health thing. And that's why we bring demons. If you if you want to know, only thing stronger is Raffi. Yeah, it's horrendous. There's so many things. Yeah, that's... That's why I didn't want Toriel to experience this. Yeah, somebody just did 26. Like, we're only doing 100 damage per shot on Ilgil. It's disgusting. 
The stats on these enemies are disgusting, for sure. So understand, I wanted to spare you the pain. <laughs> it's like, it, again, it's not too bad once you have demons. At least, you know, you have an ability to do something in the run. Like, weeds are fine. They're one of the more tame enemies. They can be kind of bad if you don't have fire resistance. Um, they have a mechanic where they put up a little purple shield, and if you shoot them, they counterattack with a big uh, brick bowie. Um, but you can dodge it. Tower is like the final boss of the area entire game for no reason. Yeah, pretty much. Tower is like, I hope you have nothing but endgame gear and high damage or perish. Playing Quadra Force here seems like a completely miserable time. <laughs> like, at least if you don't have demons. I mean, anything with demons is not as terrible as it could be, but trying to kill these with just legitimately techs must be the most sad experience. It must take so long to kill. I'm doing like barely 100 attack and they have like 500 plus health. Completely stupid. Well, I got the demon there. That's huge. The reason that you have to do this is that there are really good items from tower. So there, there's kind of the compensation for bothering to do this. But yeah, th this is something you do when you're feeling real good with your character. Like when normal runs are easy, this is when you do it. But this is the kind of stuff and why I tell people to not try it for the most part at lower difficulties. Because a lot of these mechanics are not that different from ultimate, except for the murder flowers. Uh, so you can see whip 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 200 damages. So they're doing maybe 200 a shot after Zalor and full buffs. So just think about how tanky that is, Chad, comparatively. We were doing like, what, a thousand plus a shot on forest enemies? We're doing a tenth of the damage. Rico boxes are pretty tame. Anybody can defeat these. You could use these potentially if you're playing single player to drain uh, XP or TP from them to like restore yourself. Wondering why they're sometimes here. If you leave them alone, they'll shoot out a lot of annoying things, which can be bothersome depending on what they're paired with. I'm going to try to freeze this ill kill. You can see, oh, okay, there we go. Good, good stun, good stun. So yeah. Oh, double demons. Oh, double demons. That was so lucky. I'm not going to lie. That was a lucky shot. So the Gel Beaters have 8,000 health. I just did like 4,000 there. Uh, I'm not gonna... Yeah, ooh, nice save. Lilith with the save. I appreciate that. I would have donated. Oh, well, enjoy the buffs, team. So if somebody accidentally mag, mag blasts, the best thing to probably do is guess whether or not they're going to uh, Dolphin by accident or Twin. If somebody twins, they, they will quote unquote save the mag blast. So now the team is level 49 shifted D band, which is actually pretty big. I probably could have just donated, honestly, in hindsight. That's fine. Get rid of these. So, so far, not too bad, but you can see like they're starting to become a lot of enemies on either side of you. So, not, not bad so far. XP wise, we're barely at 100 a second because. Tower is kind of miserable. So unless we get like a lot of Del Beaters, it's there. See, I don't mind rooms with a lot of Gaigwees and Gibbles if they're going to give us rooms with a lot of enemies. Just we have to be careful when we get rooms like this. I'm going to do my best to demon. Kill that. Oh, oh, that heal was clutch. I almost got bodied. Epsilon's having its way with me right now. So the trick with Epsilon is if you get very close to it, it won't hit you when it spreads out. I'm going to Zalore it so team can actually damage it. Okay, this is, this is kind of a serious wave. Got bodied. Oh gosh, oh no, Gibbles, Gibbles no! Gibbles no! <laughs> no I can't survive Gibbles. Gibbles had his way with me, chat, I'm so sorry. His, his raw damage is too high for me at the moment. I'm a bit under level for this area. I'd recommend being like 160-ish as a force, or at least consume a lot of HP materials. I'm not even doing damage. Let me Zalor. Oh, that's an inappropriate comment. I will not repeat that. We'll pick that up. Take the power material. Oh, is that it? Okay. Oh, 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 so, oh so there's a part two. My bad. Oh, my bad. I was like, really? That felt kind of short. Never mind. Never mind. There's more. It's like Billy Maze, but wait, there's more. 
<laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> I, I thought it was... Yeah. Okay. Second part is the troll. Yeah. So again, like having four plus... Yeah, see, these single spawns don't matter. It's fine. You could trickle feed the rares. So, so far, I'm not seeing anything that would... Oh, there's a 40 hit ripper I missed earlier. I don't see anything that would stop me from playing this again. Most of these waves are pretty tame. You know, we're getting one ofs. When we see when we see that enemy list fill up, we'll see. Um. Okay. Oh, we're climbing higher. Interesting. So it's combining. There's there's technically like two types of tower. So this quest is a bit longer than I thought. That's fine. Now we're going the opposite way in tower. I'm gonna stunlock the miracle. We go up and down the towers. Interesting. I'm gonna Zalore so the team can do damage. Or they'll be untargetable and I can't do it. One thing to note if you're playing uh, in episode 2 tower. These boxes are fake. You could chew through them. Those railings, you could chew through them. So they obstruct you as a melee character, but rangers don't care. So just be aware of that. Because there are things that stick out in the normal game that block your shots. But yeah, they're, they're essentially fake walls. Enemies can ignore them. Oh, hello. Goodbye, Miracle. Yeah, there's a little nest that's just going. There's the, there's the super shield. So I'm going to walk away from that so I don't take damage. But that's the retaliation shot from the guy, Guise. So again, so far, pretty tame. What would I say is the best ranger? Um... It's a tie between potentially Rockcast Rommar. Rommar is really good, I think, before you get super gear, but once you get the same, like, really good gear, I think Rommar does pull ahead. I think he has more of a reliance on challenge weapons than Rommar does, but once you get them, I think his end game is higher than Rommar. Rocket Seal is just mostly worse than Rockcast, sadly. She has some uses with the high accuracy for landing hell, so if you're looking to do, like, early episode 2, she has an advantage on Rockcast, for example. While still getting access to freeze traps. Level 21 grants, I don't think I'm gonna go back for that. Rebuff the team. See, I, I have no idea what to expect. I might have played this quest literally once before. I feel like we did try the retrieval quest not too long ago. Ooh, that was a very fortunate Rebarta. That was the luckiest of lucky freezes there, chat. You have no idea. I don't want to do any episode two. It's something I would only consider once you got some gear. It's not bad to do the early parts, but yeah, tower, tower is an acquired taste. I get it if people don't want to do tower. I don't like tower either. Speaking of which, I would like to get out of the figure skating. Team, please help me. I'm getting sunlocked. Thank you. <laughs> it's like I can, there's nothing I could do. I even if I die, mate. It's like uh, get wrecked apparently. I believed in the team on that one, and I landed double demons. I'm happy with that. What enemy is that? The Dell Beaters or the Figure Skaters? The Figure Skaters are ill gills. They do whatever they want. They, it's always party time with them. Um, the recommendation is if you oh, the recommendation is if you know there is an enemy that potentially leaps at you. If you stay near the walls, they generally won't do anything. I didn't see what chat said there. Oh, yeah, there's some guides that are like, oh, just go to tower. And I'm like, yo, oh, okay. I'm like, and how many PDs of equipment are you using to be tower? Mm hmm, very interesting. Turn heal Dango up a little so he doesn't get one shot by Del Beater or something dumb. Oh! Used to do hard blue runs for Jaya. Interesting. Are there a lot of Jaya chances there? I think we talked about it a little. There you go, some panic sounds as we kill Ilgil. That's appropriate. 
Makes sense. Oh, uh, we are. Oh. I don't know, I like this gimmick. Okay, I do have Mag Blast again for people that need it. Just let me know if somebody else has. Might be able to get a super buff again. And your buff will wear off in about 50 seconds. I'm liking the music. Not sure I'm liking this journey so far. Rip team. So the Ilgils have a chance of insta-kill. It's resistible by EDK at least, which is how I feel every stupid enemy should have been here. So at least if you have high EDK, you have a chance of surviving. The same cannot be said about uh, the murder flowers. Not the Del Lily specifically, but the giant hulking ones. Those are the problem enemies. I wish they were not like that at ultimate. Like, if they made it so that EDK actually was reasonable to achieve to defeat it, I don't think they'd be as bad. I wish they just did damage and also did EDK. That way they're not, like, completely useless. Oh my gosh, that stun was so clutch. I grouped them up, too, due to that. Oh my gosh, get off of me. Does it look like there was a switch in the middle you could stand on to turn on the lights? Interesting. It's like, I'm a big target. Let's stand on it. Speaking of which. Alright, we're just gonna freeze stun them, and then we're gonna the lure. The, the importance of freezing them is they also have insanely good evasion. Like, honestly, like, a thousand evasion is pretty high. So it is kind of annoying to hit some of these enemies consistently. Like, I'm at max ATA. I don't have guaranteed hits on non-frozen targets with a 180 base. And that's on the ones that are not... That's a murder flower, for clarity. When I'm talking about them, that that's the problem enemy. I really don't like that enemy type in general. The more of them there are, the sadder I become. Oh, a plant can evade, evades my understanding. Yeah, I don't really get it either. Another healing circle. Interesting. That's very generous of them. Don't mind me, just mag feeding. Eventually, this will be a huge new world mag finished. Ooh, team is fighting an Epsilon somewhere. So, team's at 100, I'm at 100. So, two people are at 100. Three people are at 100. So, we may be able to get a big donation. Ooh, that was scary. We may be able to get a big donation here. Let me know when you want it, team. Otherwise, I'll just hold it all day. I waited for Hellcleave to do it, and I just did twins again, just in case. Ugh. Big donation time. This should be a big shift to D-Ban for the group. Oh! It's on high level. Wonder what happened. Keep up these. We'll take 60 though. So now we have a decent chance of doing damage with this character. Well, I got the freeze. Nice. We're, we're relying purely on RNG to freeze, just for ch chat clarity. Like, it is not consistent. Which is why frozen shooters are recommended. So we'll go for it. We'll try to stall until the team can land the consistent freeze of freeze traps or whatever. And that's why it, it's also recommended that at least one cast comes in here. It's this is not an area I would ever really want to solo. Like there's an there's not a ton of ton of enemies. So like in theory you could solo this one compared to some of the other ones. But it's generally speaking I don't recommend soloing tower unless you are truly truly done with the game. Then you could learn those runs. Figure out if you want to do 
raw moral slash raw more nonsense into it. So much set damage hitting us. Yeah, the Epsilon potentially can do over 1300 damage, depending on your fire resistance. So that could also just one-shot newer players for clarity, if your fire resistance isn't good. I happen to have 45 fire resist, which makes it deal, I think, 900 damage. So I live versus it. So you could do the math off of that to calculate how much fire damage that is. It, it's a very specific build I run for this with this character, so I don't become like a burden to the team. Also, I hit the switch by accident, my bad. Still guilt. Get out of here, no party time for you. No more party time. Mm -mm. <laughs> All right, so when we're in doubt, we're gonna resign to stun law. Even though it can't freeze, it allows the team another chance. It's it's further range than Rebarda. That's all I care about. Because I need to potentially control a whole room when that kind of stuff happens. There's two doors. Ooh, there's a side A, side B. Ooh. No, rip out cleave. Oh, I can't go back. Oh, I can't go back. I've never been. Let me let me go help help leave. Oh no, team is losing buffs. Rip. So this is an interesting take on tower. This the split paths. This is the kind of stuff where I find it kind of interesting. So so far, interesting quest design. Unfortunately, don't think I could. Don't think I could reach the other team. Unless I got like a striker. If they get really close to the wall, I might be able to buff them. But that's a that's a big if. At least shoot through. If I was playing a female force, I'd be able to probably reach it more easily. Well, I'm getting bodied. Nice, land double demons. That was actually huge. There we go, I finally reached. So I didn't think I would have to take Striker of Chow at a tower quest, but here we are. Rid of Ilgils. It's every one of these Ilgils for clarity on white ID as well as purple ID drop V502, which is one of the best units in the game. It essentially gives a double chance of landing insta-kill, making episode 2 a lot easier, especially the earlier phases, and a 50% increase on paralysis, freeze, etc. Which is pretty useful for other episodes. So if you like playing uh, slightly weaker characters, you can have be kind of a support character. Cast get an inherent bonus to those status effects, specifically like the Cs. Things like Confuse, so it's easier for them to use them in Ultimate. Actually, it looks like it's doing about 800 damage-ish with my resist. Slight exaggeration earlier. Goodbye, Epsilon. We're gonna, we're gonna say no to that with a quick little Robarda. Oh, that was almost bad. Oh no, I'm the only one with super buffs. Rip. <laughs> I held it down, chat. <laughs> I was I am not playing greedy in here. I'm like, no way. The off me. Well, that could be bad for me, actually. Glad team did some damage there. I wonder how much more there is. I'm actually getting low on fluids. Some of these. Okay, so there's an Epsilon here that's abusing me. Let me heal. Ooh, I have a very high chance of instant death here. Remember, every time the Ilgil hits me, it could do instant death on me. I'm gonna do my best to spam heal. Oh no! Need it off of me. I, I can't Zalur. Oh, now I can. Okay, you're done. Oh no, I got one shot. Damn. Yeah, that's the problem. The Ilgil potentially insta killing people. Like, I have decent resistance to it. Like, I have a 48% resist. Due to playing uh, three seals, I think, right now. 
hope I'm playing three seals. Yeah, eventually he'll get through it. I did last the longest with it, but when I get skated on for like seven hits in a row, I'm like, eventually I'm going to fail a 50-50. It's inevitable. It's, I just can't handle his figure skating. He's too good for me. Oh, speaking of too good for me, if I don't get close to this target, that is also a 100 chance of death. So I have a 52% chance of dying to the purple thing if it hits me. So I'm going to get very close to this. Team will take care of the other enemies. I'm not going to worry about them. I'll Zalore them, though. We'll Zalore so the team can actually hurt the thing. There we go. We could demon it down to basically like 20 health, but ultimately we still probably need Zalore to even hurt it. It's so dumb. If you're wondering why just suddenly it stops taking damage, it's because demon stops working. I think we're listening to the extended version of the song, which is fine. Is, is there more? Okay, there, I was gonna say. That delayed Delph Eater was rude. Yeah, it'll just keep reducing, and eventually you just have to hit it with something that does damage. It'll do three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters. Oh! Team team is on that, fortunately. I still lured them, so the team's e more easily able to kill them. Can I try to Rebarda a little? You can see this is this is quite a marathon of a quest. We're at 186,000 total acquired experience. Damn, chat went in and just bop bop that boss from existence. Yeah, it's based off their current health, so it gets progressively worse. Oh, get off me, no! So one thing the other the figure skaters can do is they can root you in place with the shadow, which means you can't use items and you can't move. So forces fortunately can spam Rebarda and get out of that. But uh, right, I'm gonna try to buff as many people as possible. I'm gonna do some Rebardas maybe to slow down the Illgills. Ooh. This is rough. Oh, get away, figure skater. I want you not. There we go. Oh, get them off of us. Go away. I'm like one of the only people with buffs that I can't not attack. There we go. Try to get some buffs in. Get Dango here with buffs. Oh, that final room. So anyway, that was a fairly tame tower quest, <laughs> just by the way. So if that looked hard, um, you do not want to see the other one. Oh, we don't hand it in here. Maybe we have to talk to Paganoli. If you do zero damage, can you still freeze? Yes. I think. That's going to be a no for me, dog. Yeah, pretty much. Mission complete. Thank you for heading in the quest. Ooh. Put these here. Yeah, a lot of enemies are immune to freeze, which is kind of annoying. Epsilon is one of them. Machines in episode one. What do you mean? What machines are immune to freeze in episode one? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I don't know what that means. Is there something you Yeah, you mean arrest. Yeah, I was gonna say. But you definitely can freeze the Burans. And the Sinos. Or else we wouldn't freeze trap them. But yeah, the, yeah, the machines are also immune to paralysis slash arrest, which is kind of annoying. There's not a lot of counterplay. 8,000 Vesetta? That's it? <laughs> the quest was so long. <laughs> so anyway, Chan, let's talk about an ongoing issue called quest rewards. 
that question have been much, much more than 8,000. With, like, why? It's tower. It should be, like, 40k plus. Holy. Making bank sarcasm? Yeah, pretty much. Well, anyway, we're gonna switch IDs over to... I guess red ID or purple ID? Is it even beat? It's not even beat. I could bring in a purple ID force, I guess. Oh, I need to put away the adips. Oops, I made a small mistake there. We'll go some vices and uh, I guess Yashminikov real quick. And then from there we can talk about what IDs we can hunt. Honestly, I don't even mind playing red ID back into it. That was fun earlier. Let's see previous sessions. So we need to put these away. Okay, so let's... Yeah, this should be good. So I'll bring in a force. The team doesn't need to worry about it. And then after that, we can talk. What a quest. So anyway... Go enjoy your food, Hellclean. Toriel, if you'd like to hop back in. I promise it was the quest we were doing earlier. I promise you it is it's not gonna be that quest. You know, you don't have to worry about that one. So anyway, and that's why I was saying before, one one does not casually tower. We bring in very serious characters. There's so many stat checks and knowledge checks. There we go. Heavenly HP. I don't think I need this for this. I'm gonna go get my Gofoe merge and we should be good. Hey, Rappy Mad. Yeah. So anyway, I hope I hope that demonstrates why we don't normally play episode two. It requires very dedicated players. It requires good gear, decent levels. So it's not something you could just do like, oh, I'm level 80, let's do tower. Like, that's just not happening. Oh, who is my Gofoe merge? Hmm. That's annoying. Who did I leave it on? <sighs> fine, I'll take Rafoe. I don't like taking Rafoe over that, but that's fine. Must be... Must be on Valentine still. Because that's the only other character I think I've been using recently. Tower is nonsensical, yeah. Tower doesn't care about what your what your stats are. So I do have a congeal cloak with four slots. I think this so the reason he has both of these is because I was doing Lily runs, and if you're fighting Lily, they're weak to lightning and uh, single player, but freeze in multiplayer. So I have them both here. We did get through it. <laughs> Chat, you can't tell this character was doing Lily runs before. It's just a few safety scape dolls so I don't die. A couple. So anyway, I guess I'll Rafoe mostly. I'm not going to worry about doing real damage with this character. Ooh, what are his techniques set up as? Ooh, I can't see that unless I'm in the main main area. We'll see in a moment, I guess. So it was new mop operation four, I think. Is there a mod to no weaknesses? Indeed, there is. We're currently using it. So if you look in the upper right, Guardian Angel, whenever we hit an enemy, it'll tell you the resists. It makes playing a force very easy because sometimes there's very annoying differences between single player and multiplayer that are just kind of arbitrary knowledge checks, like knowing that it's not worth using ice on Deathbringers slash Chaosbringers, or knowing that the resistance has changed for Lilies in Episode 1. It's just kind of like an unnecessary check of knowledge. Anyway, back to Rafoe. Do you have Rafoe set up properly? Oh, you do! Oh, so I could just do this. There we go. Now we're playing Force like they're meant to be played. Spamming all the buttons. The reason we do this, just for clarity as a Force, is it leads to faster casting. 
So basically, uh, there's a certain number of frames it takes for you to exit the casting animation. You can menu this, and if you menu again, you can see it highlights the color for a little bit of time. Uh, that means that it will buffer it. And so the moment, the exact frame that it's able to cast again, it casts. So this just ensures you have the most pure optimal damage possible. It does make a difference for people that are wondering. Potentially it leads to one or two total casts additional, especially if you're casting a Foey, which is potentially upwards of 800 damage in solo. And a lot of enemies in solo only have 2,000 damage, so you could do the math of being able to do 8,000 more, or 800 more, of how important that is by just being optimal with it. And there's a the little trick. We all walked away from the Rappies, so if everybody just keeps walking, walk away. Walk away from Rappies. Team is walking into the Rappies. I want to demonstrate something. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to walk away. So walk away. Don't get close. We just walk away, the Rappies will run away, naturally. Oh, unfortunately someone went back in. <laughs> You're too close to the Rappies, no. I keep asking for it. So anyway, there's a certain radius around them you have to walk away or they don't get up. And that's what happened. Somebody re-entered the door and stopped them from leaving. So yeah, just pay attention to the upper right, it has all the enemy stats. So if you're wondering how I was rattling off the defense, I just look up there when I'm playing. It teaches you also accuracy, which is very nebulous in PSO. And unless you really sit there with a combo calculator, you won't know. So I can see they have 40 fire resist, which is their lowest resist. So I could just use that as my reminder. Welcome video horse, hope you're doing well. Yeah, I prefer usually to stack a Foey here, but if I don't have a Gafoey merge, I'll just do the old classics. Ooh, nice vice find. If that drop with hit, that's actually pretty huge. Oh, they're paralyzed, I can't hit them. So anyway, we'll do the frame one cast to kind of speed things up. No hit, oh, that's a shame. So you can see, like, I am, I am definitely rapid firing. Okay, wrong doors over there. Yeah, being able to rapid fire it, it's kind of nice. Gafoey's pretty fast compared to Gafoey. Gafoey's advantage is like, if there's multiple enemies that are weak to fire back to back, you can just immediately exploit their weakness. So technically, if I had been Gafoey stacking there, it could have hit the satellite lizards, technically. So, on a case for quest for quest, room for room basis, I will determine if it's worth stacking. So that would have been a room that probably would have been worth stacking. Basically, if it has Marissa's, you want to make sure you stack if you can. But sadly, I just don't have my right gear for it. If you're waiting between waves, you could just do a safety Gafoe. No real harm in it. Um, I'm going to take the warp. Hope you're doing well, Video Horse. Ooh, out of MP. Lush TP. <laughs> Might as well teal the room. Guys, there's a decent number of enemies I could, in theory, Gafoe stack. For example, in this final wave, I could just do a couple Gafoe's here, just to see. Huh, got rewarded. Because it is a commitment to just not doing damage for the rest of the wave. Don't need to worry about that. Get my Trifluid in a moment. Oh, did you put down the, uh, telepipe? Oh, I have no idea where my Ryukur is. Okay. Let's see. To come back here eventually. So what I'm gonna do to save some time. When the team goes this way, team should go left through the door. Don't follow me. Don't follow me. I don't know why the team's going this way. Go through the door. Uh, I will put down a Ryuker here. And that way, when the team is ready, they could take my Ryuker to get back there. So I could choose to lose some time here. Technically, team can also telepipe, and I can take the Ryuker back, so I don't have to walk back. But again, it depends on like communication. I didn't commu communicate that beforehand, so that's what's called my fault. <laughs> but like that's how you save time. 
it doesn't save like a ton of ton of time but it saves time on the comeback so the fact that i have it there going forward means that potentially i'm not sure how many waves in we are okay there's enough that it matters so potentially i could use that warp to save a little tiny bit of time so otherwise you have to do kind of a long walk i chose to just take the long walk by myself and take the loss because i'm slower like my my damage is not needed in a room with like three ranger hue cast combos kind of things like i don't i don't need to be in the rooms i'm i'm a nice assist but not needed yeah we're gonna be taking that warp in a little bit so all we need is somebody else to tell the pipe at some point during the run and we should be good the downside with Rafoe is if somebody gets too close to Marissa's, I can't hit them. They're wondering what was happening there. But I could do this in the meantime. Oh, you're out of range. Rubarda also has a broken distance. I always forget to judge where it actually hits. None of the spells hit the where they graphically appear, if Chad is curious. When you hit level 30, the game just goes into wacky worlds with the uh, hitboxes. I'm gonna try to demonstrate the max range for Barda so chat understands. Like there. I hit the Satellite Lizard from where I'm standing. And I hit the other one from where I'm standing here. Wacky worlds. Anyway, once we hit that switch, team will take my telepipe back. Just to save some walking distance. Because I put it right against the laser gate. Nice Tempest Cloak. Yeah. So team will telepipe. Take the team's telepipe. And wait for everybody to go through. Perfect. And then what I could do again, see how there's another laser gate here? I can put another Ryuker here. We do the same thing again. And that this one will save more time than the other one. Like, that one was like a... Maybe like a 10-15 second time save. This one is like 40 seconds easy. So knowing both of those can make the quest go much faster. And generally makes the quest a little more fun. But this is what I'm talking about with like quest design. I wish I didn't have to do that. Like, I don't mind that it might help for like bonus items or something like that. But when you're playing single player and you have to take the long walk, it feels really terrible. <laughs> Stack a couple for the next wave, because my damage isn't needed. Uh, sort of rewarded. Some enemies don't take damage on spawn, like if they get hit while spawning in, they'll take zero damage. But because Gavoe is delayed, if I have several waves of Gafoe, some might not have hit the enemy exactly on spawn. And that re I think that's not the right way. I and that results in uh, the follow-up Gafoe doing damage. So even if there are three Gafoe out, only two may hit. But it's still free damage kind of things. It's those little things as a force you have to kind of think about per room. So sometimes if I recognize like a wave is going to die, I'm just going to Gafoe. Like I don't need to do the last touch there. And maybe these lingering waves of Gafoe will do some damage. Or I can also think to myself, if I'm able to get in the room faster, I could reposition easier. Ooh, rare Marissa. Love to see rare enemies. Marissa double A. Whose resistance, whose weakness is lightning, I think. Opiel C's draw, not bad. Too bad it has no hit. Take it though. So... Chad is about to save an enormous amount of time. I'm going to wait for everybody to take it. So one person took my warp, two people, three people. And this skips a like four, five room backtrack. And I put the team right in front of the gate. So like that's how we can optimize the quest a little bit. And the, like when I do play a quest, quest, sometimes I'll pick up on it in public games or sometimes somebody will come on stream and teach it. So I'm not going to pretend to be the end all be all of quest knowledge. But this is probably one of the few I kind of know. At least from like a layout wa wise. Wave wise, I have no idea. I forget every time. There's just too many quests involving episode 4. I don't memorize the waves. But if I remember the rooms, I can maybe save some time. 
Like here, there's no point to me doing anything other than Mufoe, which results in doing about 800 more damage to the next wave. So if I know exactly how many uh, waves there are per room, I could decide, for example, if it's worth using a Gafoe here or not. So I could stack a couple Gafoe if I want, just to see. So here's the example of the lingering Gafoe. See how they're taking, they took almost uh, 700 damage there with lingering Gafoe. So even though the enemy can't be instantly bursted like Rappi's or Marissa's can, it still ended up being pretty useful. Those are the things I don't always articulate, but I just want people to be aware when they play Force. There's a lot of ways you can try to optimize your damage with Force. One of them involves using different menus for text. The other one that people like to use is this one. So for example, if I just want to be always in the menu here, I could just do dial-up combo stuff where I just do this. If you don't like menuing a lot, you could do this. The downside to this is that if you have to react with other techniques, I find it a little slower sometimes. But technically, if you just want to spam it quickly, you could do that. I recommend that menu over uh, the thing I was doing for uh, quests where you're only spamming Gafoe, like Beyond the Horizon, or you're trying to stunlock Bolt up. I think that quest, that menu is super good for that. Okay, I got one Gafoe out, which is okay. Go ahead and debuff the wave. Get a couple freezes for assistance. Oh, even with double add up, I'm burning 3 TP. I guess that's the downside of the, the bare hand casting. So if Chad is also wondering why I'm not casting with a weapon, uh, it's faster to bare hand cast, which matters more if I'm refoeing. If you stack enough Gafoe, I think that it's better to bare hand cast than use it with the other stuff as well. But if you bare hand cast and then immediately equip into a wand while the enemies are spawning, that would be preferable. But I, I don't want to go down to that level. Because technically you could stack more overall Gafoe versus if you did a staff, just because it is faster to bare hand cast. So a little joke sometimes we do on stream when people ask what the best force weapon is, or like a faux Newman, we just say, just unequip your weapon, you already have it. <laughs> Equip your fists. It's so fast. We keep Gazan here to stunlock the Goron detonator specifically. But if team locks them down with freeze traps, which the team did, uh, we don't need to worry as much. You can see I could just kind of rapid fire that. There's a reason I also put things like, uh, what's it called? Gazond at the top of the list. It's just because it's such a fast spell. Like, look at that. Like, look how fast that menuing is. You, you will not be able to input that as accurately with other things. So certain spells have a very fast cast time and it's not great. But yeah. We'll get Toriel potentially to do some freeze traps here and here. So I think if he just weaves them in a couple times, we should be good. There's only like one wave left. You might as well just burn him if you got him. Yeah, there we go. I still lord the Gertabulu. If I want to damage it, I could just grant it. It consistently gets through. Technically, every time its claws light up, that's the element you should use to counter it. So if it's got red claws, Foey, for example. But yeah, that, that rapid casting. Knowing to do this is like such a lifesaver. Like, look how fast that is. Unlimited power, that's what it looks like to me, pretty much. Take that money, why not? Anyway, quest over. <laughs> the group's wandering around, I was just going back for money. Uh, there's also some items over there, but nothing of interest dropped for me. And that's the RBR. So people will do a lot of green and red for Heaven Striker specifically. Red gets the added bonus of uh, getting a Disco Brave Man in the mix. Let me look at the exact enemy counts on that last one. Just to say if it's worth doing these other things. Actually, I thought there was a zoo in this run. I take that back. There are no zoos. So green ID is just, I think, overall worse than. Green ID usually has the offset of having V101 from zoos. But given that there's literally no zoos at any point, and I wasn't just missing it earlier, uh, they don't enter in the consideration. So purely from the standpoint of Pyrogorons and Goron Detonators, which is an okay amount, Red ID gets Heaven Striker, just get Brave Man. Um, there's like an okay amount of Marissas. There's 24 of them. So in theory, 
if you really wanted Guardiana and Mother Guard, Pink ID is not too bad. With a very rare chance of Limiter and some Ophiel Seas. Does our VR see nothing we want? Go back to hard, very hard, find stuff we want. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, our VR is like... I, I think I felt bad because somebody was like, I'm playing a game in RBR with other people and all these people are getting items and I don't. And I'm like, unfortunately, that's VSO. <laughs> it's so true, though. <laughs> it's so true. A lot of times you'll just have really dead runs, but that's why I like to play multiple characters. And the way I view it is I got XP in the run. That was the success. That, that was the real, the real point of the quest. <laughs> XP with a side of rares. That's not too bad. But it's so true, though. It's so true. Sometimes one person will get 3D parts in one drop. Yeah, exactly. We don't know who we don't know who that would be, though. That could be anybody. I mean, I guess it's up to the chat. Do you want to do more RBR and conclude the RBR segment? Or do you want to do other quests? I think the episode 4 one is probably the only one of the bunch that we played that's maybe worth doing. We did it on purple ID, which means uh, we get Yashminikov M from Gorons and Vices from Marissa. I just see the word, yeah. Unless we want to do TWF. TWF? I don't know what that is. Oh, unless that's tower. Unless you meant tower. Yeah, episode 4 is generally the best one in general. Just because episode 4 gives so much XP. The way forward. I don't know what that is. Let's look this up. Oh, unless you mean towards the future. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, what? <clears throat> yeah, TTF is the other quest. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, did I miss a custom quest? I'm not gonna say it won't, yeah. You know, you were close, I just, I didn't know. Sure, I'll put the oak field seeds away, why not? Yeah, yeah, towards the future is really good. So I'm thinking maybe we'll do one more RBR at once. And then I see like, and then I, I see I see a call for Towards the Future. So we can do Towards the Future after this. I think at some point we need to try to get a, we need Parasitic Gene Flow for our poor Dango friend at some point though. One day we'll we'll manifest it. We'll forcefully clear enough that the game will have to drop it. So yeah, let's do I guess one more of these just to conclude the RBR segment, and then it sounds like we'll be doing TTFRT afterwards. Which I don't mind. I I do want at least one more red ring. I'm still looking for uh, what's it called. Lavis Cannon from the Rare Enemies, or Ortista Stone randomly from PTF. So we'll do one of these, and then we'll say goodbye to YouTube for the uh, RBR section. Yeah, the only downside with moving the menu, it's a little awkward to get to Ryuker. Got PGF in my second RT run, but no RR yet. Uh-oh. Don't say that to Dango. <laughs> Dango's gonna fall over dead. Just boom. I don't want to be equipped with Glide Divine. No, thank you, Glide Divine. One thing I find amusing from Glide Divine, though, and you don't see it because it's in the weapon stats, if you take a look at your resistances and then put on Glide Divine, you notice it actually gives resistances. I didn't know that for the longest time because you don't see it when you're in the, the menu. It doesn't talk about it giving resists. But hey, if you're looking to survive nonsense, welcome back, Dango.
Thank you, Guardian Angel. Will you get some rest? Yeah, we'll do a mix of TTF, RT, I think, after this. See, the, the trick with TTF and RT, it doesn't matter what the week is. You do the quests. It's just, it's just what they are sometimes. I figure we'll enjoy one more of these. To say that we at least did some RBR. We could point to this as video evidence. So allegedly we have a boosted egg drop rate, but you know, whatever. RBR equals did, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I don't feel like swapping into the other character for Kafoe merge. They could keep that. I feel like today, I feel like this next couple days are probably just gonna be a mostly non-force runs from me. So I feel like we've been doing force a lot. I'll do a little bit of this as prep. Set up on the next wave. Oh, that kind of paid off. One day I will not be baited by the doors. Like, there's so many small things they could do to, like... It wouldn't even impact the quest. It would just help with readability. Like, could they please just lock those doors? I beg of you. So that way we're not confused where to go. I believe in the team damage here. Spook, my bad. Not rewarded. I feel like even though I knew this was the right way, I still found myself second guessing. Certainly a quest. Blow those up. Nothing of interest. Right, I'm gonna move out of the way. I'm not dealing with this. Yeah, when in doubt, just start off with a couple of Worst thing that happens, happens—you get a little free chip damage. If you ever find yourself with downtime and wave, just Kafoe. The worst thing that happens, it does like 200 extra damage. And who knows, that might lead to a combo kill for somebody. Since I can't target these as easily, I'm just going to go fully to clean up. Got baited by the door again. The bait is real. Where are my fluids looking? Oh, still tens. Guess that's fair. Oops. Oh, I ate an HP material. That sucks. I didn't want to do that, actually. That's why I hate holding them. If I menu that and miss menu, I'll eat them by accident. Annoying. I actually don't want to use HP materials on my characters. I might request them to just have an option to clear them. <laughs> they probably won't do it. Because you could clear and reset all your materials except for those, which is kind of unfortunate. Take one of these, take these. Did it again. I'm just dropping this HP material. I don't want to eat the other one. That's how a lot of my characters have HP material usage. If I'm doing this fast menuing and I miss like one rotation, it's so sad when it happens. Or if I forget I'd like try fluided through the menu. Which is why I'm trying to train myself not to do it, but sometimes out of habit, I'll use the menu here because I'm trying to buffer like a heal. Which is a good thing to do. You want to buffer potentially your heal usage if you're knocked down, for example. Uh, but when it causes me to eat materials I don't want, it is definitely very annoying. Because I'm already capped on my other materials, so I don't have to worry about it with those. But just specifically HP material is like that. 
I was so far from that drop. How did that hit me? It's crazy. But unfortunately, I've been capped at 99 for a while, so I didn't get to put these away on this character. I don't think, like, eating a couple will be a problem. It's when I start getting over certain HP thresholds that'll be a problem. Like, I want to be at, like, 1,402 and not a point higher on most characters. Some characters don't hit that naturally, which is fine. But I like for the characters that hover around 900 HP to remain there as long as possible. He's past one of the thresholds that I normally sit at, so it's not the worst. If this happened on the other character that was at 900, I would be very upset. Because, um... The laser from episode 4 boss does 870 damage, so if I make sure that I never have more than another 80 on top of that, what'll happen is that if I get hit by laser and knocked down, it will trigger potentially mag immunity for me, which is actually a big time saver, and I like doing that with forces. Fortunately, this character doesn't need it. He's already too high HP. I'm assuming- oh, he does- oh. Actually, it does matter. He is Heavenly on. Mmm... Okay. So it could, in theory, make him do it. I think he's still within range, so if I still want to do some purple pods with him later, he's still fine, I think. Again, like, a couple won't hurt, but, like, eating 50-plus will ruin the character for me. Unless they're at one of those thresholds. I feel it's kind of like... 720, 900, 1400, and I want nothing else in between. If you happen to be at like 1800, you might as well go all the way kind of thing. Because I do like to have- I like certain things to knock me down and certain things to not knock me down. Like for example, I don't like getting, uh... Insta-killed by Dorfon, for example as a high hit point raw cast. Hmm. Could I go Poe there? I'm gonna go Poe in general since they're a little spread. Let's get material and HP material behind. I really don't want to pick them up right now. Okay, so we're back in this room. So I'm going to take the time loss for the team on the next one. I forgot to put the telepipe down earlier. I could save the team a little bit of time by Ryuku in here in case they're not here yet. So if team is lost, just take my telepipe. I'm going to put one like right here. We'll take it on the way back. So small time loss, but not like end of the world. Just as long as we don't miss that last one. That's the more important one. I got distracted by HP materials, and that caused me to not focus on what room I was in, sadly. Get some buffs in, go back. So yeah, this character is probably maybe four levels from no longer being able to do easy pod. So at that point, I'll just figure out what I want to do with him, other than Lily runs. I find myself second guessing every room. This can't be right, right? Yeah, that can't be right. I hate that both of those doors are green. That makes me double check twice as often. It's so bad. There's so many small quality of life things that could be applied to this, it's so sad. Oh, finally, an event egg, jeez. Did I not mean to pick up that laser? Okay, I'm gonna leave the team just to kill the Pyrogorons. Yeah, there we go. There's a good Gafoe stack on this room. All their HP is basically halved. 
Then just stack a couple more and it should be GG. The problem is like Mercis can be frozen in the air, so it's also especially not worth refoeing them if they do that. Okay team, someone teleport. Nice vice. Okay, so everybody take mine and we should be good. Dango's going on a magical journey. I'm gonna go ahead and move the telepipe when he's ready. That way he's a little less of a walk. Yeah, see how the they're jumping around like that? That's when it's not worth using uh, Rafoe. You, you can't hit them in the air like that. They're just immune. I'm just gonna get Bowie stack. Nice, did half their health. Put it these. Ooh, look at that punishment on them. This is so much damage. Nice level up. Perish. Sadly, no ATA. That's probably the only thing I care about at this point, is making sure we get ATA. Oh, I missed Dango with buffs earlier. I'm gonna fix that in a second. Fixed. Why was he wearing Heavenly? What was I doing last with him that needed him to be at a thousand? He doesn't need it for episode four. I must have done something with episode two with him. Maybe I took him to the tower at some point. It's the only thing I can think of. I, I don't need it in caves. I would never wear it in caves. Must have been something tower related. Damn, everybody finding vice but me. So sad. Where's the Yashminikovs? Come on, game. I mean, I'll probably play this at some point for Yashminikov. But I'll, I'll take breaks. It's not a quest I want to like grind out compared to some of the others. One day, chat, I will get my Yashminikovs. Ooh, there's a switch over there. Gives it the switch. Yeah, with that. Frame perfect casting, you can see the enemies can't even attack me. It's so disgusting. The fact that the Fomin Fo Newman can stun lock this is insane. I mean, look at this. The, the hunters and rangers have just free reign over these enemies. They can't do anything. And then the freeze trap, that is so disrespectful. I love it. Yeah, we're gonna get Zon loop these. You can see, I can just pump this out. Like, they just die super fast. It's on so good. It's like I'm comboing with it because of how fast I'm attacking. It's kind of silly. I love it. And let's debuff everything. Make sure the team doesn't die to melee. So, spam Rafoe to stunlock the Gritabulu. Oh, I hit my own Ryuker. That's annoying. Controlled by my own telepipe. Where are the other- oh, the Rappies are unconscious. The HP reader was just glitched. Cause I was like, I see a 1256 Rappy, but I don't see it see it. That makes sense now. Trolled. Oh, oh, now they drop something? No, no, leave the rap- Guys, just walk away from the rapies. You're killing me. You're making this take like 30 seconds longer. Walk away. All of you walk away. Thank you. It's out. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> you just need to move like approximately- Like if they're in the center of the room, just move to like slightly outside and it's good enough. So I finally got an event egg from a rappy. Is that the first one on stream? I feel like we've done that. I feel like we've done that for so long, and this is the first time a Rappy has dropped it. Yeah, I saw you take a swing. On my screen, they were uh, still there. Or desync. 
There we go. Could have been a timer issue, because I did teleport in and out. It might have confused the game. There we go. Yeah, basically the way you think about it is a little less than max pistol distance is the distance the Rappies will wake up. So if you are playing with like a pistol or slicer, generally think about max distance with that. It should be good enough. Yeah, I got a free scape doll. Okay. So let's wrap up the RBR section of this stream. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube again. So that's it for the RBR. We did a demonstration of force for most of the areas. A little bit of raw cast. But hopefully uh, that will help you, potentially people watching on Twitch more than I would say YouTube, uh, with going through those quests to get an idea of what to expect in those and viewing how they were handled and potentially optimizing from there by remembering the waves and such like that. But I think with that, we're going to say goodbye to YouTube for a completely separate section of PSO. So if you did watch to this point, the video of the Vaughn, thank you for watching. Hopefully see you again in the next part.